Every day, we use goods and services that can only be manufactured by using substances that are sometimes hazardous. Let us just think, for example, of the companies that produce or use chemical substances for the industrial processes, of the substances used to produce the many goods of our everyday lives, of the chemical products needed to clean our houses, to the fuels needed to run our cars, to cook with or heat our houses, to the products used in agriculture. So that we do not have to go without these goods in our everyday lives, it is essential to transport a wide variety of goods daily on our roads, including hazardous goods. Our roads are used to transport a wide variety of hazardous goods. A substantially large amount of hydrocarbons, such as highly inflammable petrol, diesel and GPL, are transported. Although a lower quantity as a percentage poisonous, corrosive, environmentally unfriendly and explosive goods are also transported. Recent studies indicate that the transportation of hazardous goods is not seen as dangerous per se, in as much as the regulations in force render this type of transportation very safe. The probability of accidents occurring with vehicles transporting hazardous goods is therefore very low. But vehicles transporting hazardous goods need special care when using the road network. If this type of vehicle is involved in an accident, it can have very serious consequences for road users and the immediate environment. Damage linked to an accident involving the transportation of hazardous goods determines the cost for our society. The safety of the transportation of hazardous goods is therefore closely interrelated to the safety of transportation in general. It is possible to achieve better safety for the transportation of hazardous goods by working on various fronts. Urban development planning, prevention of risk linked to road transportation of hazardous goods and the timely and correct management of potential emergencies are basic objectives for the safety of the territory. It is essential that the system of responding to emergencies is always ready to deal effectively with accidents involving hazardous substances. First of all, the sequence of the various aspects of the rescue is based on the availability of an efficient system to manage emergency calls, able to promptly activate the emergency teams most suitable to deal with the emergency. In addition, it is essential to have the appropriate equipment that has to be constantly maintained by the rescue services in order to keep it efficient and always ready for use. Training of drivers to transport hazardous goods and training rescuers in techniques and tactics of various actions, as well as how to use the equipment, are the essential links of an efficient rescue sequence. Furthermore, implementing these drills has the objective of bringing it to the attention of the authorities and the public. The ADR constitutes the agreement related to the international transportation of hazardous goods on European roads. Vehicles that transport hazardous goods must be provided with an orange color warning sign. In the upper half, the so-called camera code identifies the hazard. In the lower half, the UN number identifies the type of substance transported. The warning rectangle must measure 40 by 30 centimeters with numbers 10 centimeters high. Background is orange. The sign must always be fixed on the front and rear of the vehicle. Each of us could suddenly be exposed to a serious hazard. Firefighters, emergency services and other rescue organizations are available to members of the public in order to guarantee their everyday safety and in the event of any significant occurrence. These organizations, however, cannot always intervene at the same time everywhere. In some circumstances, it may take some time for the rescue services to arrive. Time is the key. Just a few minutes can be decisive for saving human life or preserving material assets.
These are vital minutes when we each have to rely solely on our own efforts. Correct conduct in such situations means taking action for self-preservation. If you know that the accident involves hazardous goods, it is essential you inform the emergency number so that they can activate the appropriate rescue team. Remember to give the alarm by calling the emergency numbers. The number 112 is the emergency number for all the European Union. You can call this emergency number with your mobile phone, even without a SIM card. You must specify the following when calling the emergency number. Who is calling, what has happened, where it happened, the current situation. If you're outdoors near the location of the accident, you should immediately move away and wait for the arrival of the rescue team. In any case, you should not approach a vehicle involved in an accident that you know carries hazardous goods. Abstrain from smoking and using anything that can produce sparks, lighters, matches, candles, or switching on electrical appliances. In the case of accidents with hazardous substances, the best shelter is to be found indoors. You should bear in mind that toxic gases disseminate like air. In serious cases, you must prevent the gas infiltrating residential homes by closing doors and windows and switching off ventilation systems. It is advisable to protect your mouth and nose with a wet cloth. In any event, follow closely the instructions of the authorities or rescue teams. Keep yourself and anyone with you, elderly, children or invalids, calm. Following this brief and simple advice will contribute to your safety and support the work of the rescue services.